Today on Ocean Treks. It's amazing and wet and fast. I discover Alaska's wildlife by air. That was awesome. And we got some bears. And by sea. Fish on, guys. All right. Nice pink. pink. Yeah, good job. And then delve into this region's artistic heritage. It's like my own little master class. I'm Jeff Corwin. I'm on a trip of a lifetime visiting the greatest port cities on the planet. Every week, I'll come ashore at a new port and head out on the best day trip ever. I'm going to get to do something that no one has ever done before. For me, it's about exploring. And no matter where I go, I know there's adventure waiting. This is Ocean Treks. Our voyage in the Star Princess has brought us to Alaska's first city, the gateway to the north, Ketchikan, Alaska, where I'm about to have the most amazing day trip ever. Ketchikan is located on Pennock Island and named after the Ketchikan Creek, which flows through the town and empties into the Tongass Narrows. There is just so much to see and learn here. This community is steeped in rich native Alaskan cultural history and provides a unique artistic link to Ketchikan's past. But if there's one thing, one attractant that brings thousands of people from around the world to this community, it is the salmon. Salmon are not only the lifeblood for this community, but for the entire state of Alaska. And they have an incredible story to tell. In Ketchikan, there's no fish more perfectly delicious or representative of the region than the king salmon. And today, I'm hoping to catch a king salmon for myself. My mission right now is to try to connect with one of these iconic fish. So, I love to fish. I love salmon. Some tells me this is gonna be awesome. Joining me for our fishing adventure, we've got Jeff Peck, expert fishing guide to help me tap into the best salmon spots on the Ketchikan coast. Go catch some salmon. I'm off to hopefully catch a king salmon. These remarkable fish range anywhere from 24 to 36 inches in length. And the largest one ever caught weighed 97 pounds. Let's hope I'm that lucky. The weather is a little soupy and it's bitten. But for fishing, fish love this sort of weather. A little disturbed water, some uh, marine layer, and they're jumping and they're biting. You bet. For this type of fishing, we'll be trolling. And with salmon fishing, you kind of go pretty slow, right? Yes, typically two to 2.2 knots is the optimum speed. And we want to go deep. Jeff's fishing strategy involves deploying lures at various depths. Okay, so we're gonna attach this 12 pound downrigger ball. We sometimes call them a cannonball. This will actually clip to the line so that way the whole bait and the whole presentation can lower down to the depth you want. So we're gonna fish the spoons down deep because the king salmon tend to like to eat the spoons here down deep. By lowering the lures and bait to various depths in the water, it increases our chances of connecting with the fish. So you can see what Jeff has set up here. We've got four rods flying out, and you got two ways you can do it. You can do it with outriggers or downriggers. Outriggers is you send those lines away from the boat. With a downrigger, you're sending those lines deep. Salmon are often deep. We could be getting pink salmon, lots of them in the water. What I really want to catch is the piece de resistance salmon, which is a Chinook or a king. Our strategy seems to be working. We're getting some hits. Feels like a pink. All right. Nice pink. pink. Yeah, good job. Awesome. My first catch, a beautiful pink salmon. Oh, he's on. Oh, there we go again. Fish on. The legal daily limit per angler is six fish per day, which means I've got five more fish to catch. So Alaska is home to, I think, what, five species of salmon, right? Five species. So we've got the king salmon, the Chinook. That is the number one salmon. Big, beautiful, delicious. Then you've got the uh, sockeyes, also known as the red salmon. You've got the silvers, which are the cohos. Then you got your pinks what we seem to be catching a lot of today. And then you have the dog salmon, the chum. And we found yet another one. Awesome, another perfectly pink salmon. That's two down and four more to go. And we're presenting these lures, these shiny bait-like lures that resemble anchovies or sardines at different levels. So we have got one at uh, around 97 feet. 
and the other one has it around 40 feet. That way we're increasing the opportunities of catching a salmon. Okay, here we go. We awesome. All one. right. So we're going to reel down to the water. And one, two, three, boom. Uh, it's a humpy. Got him? Yep. So we've got a pink salmon right here. And this looks like a male. All right, there's another one. This one's got some bite to it. All right, so we got something on here. Feels like it's got some size. The most important resource in Alaska is the salmon. It produces revenue that secures the livelihood of thousands of people up here. People from around the world travel to Ketchikan to experience this coveted fish. This one's got some gumption. He doesn't want to get caught. Got him? Here we go. We're doing really well. Seems like they're biting. We're scoring nice in the pink salmon. What I want us to catch is the king salmon. OK, there's another yeah, fish, Jeff. Fish there's on. another right. fish. So we, we got that bounce. We've already caught four fish in the cooler, all pinks. Fingers crossed for a mighty king. Get that salmon off the hook. Another nice salmon. Another pink salmon. We've got one last shot to nab a king salmon. Fish on, guys. All right. Hopefully, this guy I've got on the line now, maybe it's the one. Our final catch of the day, and it's not a king salmon. But still, it was a ton of fun. And no matter what kind of salmon you catch, it's all pretty spectacular. All good right. job. Salmon in the net. Now that is a good day of fishing. Coming up next, the ultimate wooden time capsule. Then later. I'm in Ketchikan, Alaska, the salmon capital of North America. And I've just got a taste of salmon fishing, Ketchikan style. But just as the salmon is vital to the Ketchikan ecosystem, totem poles are a vital symbol of native Alaskan culture. I think one of the most important and powerful stories to tell here in Alaska is the story of the native Alaskans, the first people to live in this incredible frontier. And here in Ketchikan, it's a story about the Tlingit. It literally means the people of the shore. Now, throughout the Pacific Northwest, these native communities have found an incredible way to connect the past with the present, the real world with the world of magic and folklore encompassing history and clan and family stories. And it's done with the ultimate wooden time capsule, the totem pole. And here in Ketchikan, this is the world's largest collection. Most of the totems are carved from western red cedars because it's ideal for carving and resistant to rot. The trees themselves are chosen for their beauty and character. Out of all the symbolic animals that help weave together this incredible culture, this may be the most powerful, the most important. It is the mighty raven the trickster, sometimes a shapeshifter, and he was integral in creating the elements of the planet, transforming the oceans, bringing about the land, and actually affecting the stars in the solar system. You're surrounded by this beautiful temperate rainforest, and then this, these amazing historic poles of art with such intricacy and detail. And each one tells its own story. This one is about the myth of a man who left his family and wandered into the wilderness, became smitten with the bear, had conflict with the cubs. And then on the top, we see this loon, this flighted creature, a bird that leads a people from under the ice to a river to their new home. And what I find most amazing is that the story of the totem pole is as powerful today as it was in years gone by. This totem pole is nearly a century old, but there's a man here, an artist, who still tells these stories. He's a living legend and one of our country's most celebrated artisans and totem pole carvers. Up next, I visit a Ketchikan National Treasure. It's like my own little master class.
I'm ocean trekking around the globe, soaking in the most inspiring and beautiful experiences I can pack into a single day trip. Ketchikan is home to one of the world's most celebrated artists, and I'm about to learn the secrets that makes his work so magical. Hey there, Nathan. Hello. How's it going? Uh, Good to see you. Uh, yeah. Didn't want to startle you in case you were operating power tools. Uh, that's true. <laughs> it's awesome to be in your studio. It's like my own little master class. Nathan's incredibly skilled process of totem carving is very intricate. After an initial design and paper, Nathan uses pencils to trace the features onto the trunk of a carefully chosen red cedar tree. Once the design is sketched out, he uses a set of sharp tools to carve and etch details of the characters he's designing. The bigger knives are used to make grooves into the cedar, while the smaller ones focus in on the fine detailed work. What's the story of this one right here? Well, this is an eagle at the top, then also a bear is going to be on the bottom. And the reason for the Viz Queen is more just to keep the dampness, and the more damp the wood is, the easier it is to carve. When I'm carving, I use both hands, and so I have better control. So you're basically just slicing into the wood? Yeah. This hand here ends up uh, drawing it, and then I'm kind of pushing it along with my thumb. Witnessing Nathan's remarkable work is impressive, but now it's my turn to take a stab at it. That's hard, actually. It's not, I was thinking this wood would be super soft. It's not that soft. So you have all these different sorts of tools, over a dozen different knives and axes, and this is actually used to almost just to carve out bigger chunks of well, wood. Well, this one is called finishing ads. The tool is the one that does the work. It creates a finishing. When the broad strokes are in place, Nathan employs a finishing tool to perfectly craft and polish his piece of art. It's not easy. Put your elbow right up close, tight. Like that? Yeah. So you could see how, as Nathan begins to whittle and carve away at the wood, a face is being revealed. And this is a face of an eagle. Here's the brow of the eagle right here. But this is going to take a tremendously long time. This doesn't happen overnight. So there's going to be an eye right here, and then there's the eyebrow that I kind of barely sketched. And then there's a little tiny ear. And then over here on this side is the wings, which extends right. all the way that, down. The way the wings flail out, and this is the yeah. beak right here. And this one is going to Colorado, and it's gonna be an inside totem pole. Why do you carve totem poles? What is your inspiration to do this? Seems to me that as far as my people are concerned, there were very few carvers. And uh, when I got started, it was probably one of the more important things in doing artwork and enjoying what you do. How does it feel to know that some of the top museums in the world have your totem poles? Well, the artwork speaks for itself. Right. I just take my time. Watching Nathan work, simply being in his presence really hits home that travel is the gateway to showing us all that people are our most valued treasures. And artists like Nathan, who pour the history of their people into their work, are perhaps humanity's most prized resource. It really is kind of humbling to be in the presence of such a great artist who for over half a century has been taking the natural elements like a big rainforest emergent tree and transforming it into art that tells a story of the people that live today who are so powerfully influenced by the people of yesterday. Thanks a lot, Nathan. This was awesome. Yeah, you're welcome. Coming up, they are black bears. Then later, you're looking at a fish specialist. I'm exploring Ketchikan, Alaska, enjoying an incredible day trip. So far, I've caught prized fish, 
and witnessed the art of totem pole carving from a living legend. My adventure here in Ketchikan, Alaska is living up to expectations. But as with all great adventures, it's coming to an end. I gotta get back to the ship. I got time for one last thing. And that one last thing is to experience a rainforest. We think of the rainforest, right? We think of the tropics. But in fact, right here in Alaska is the world's second largest tract of rainforest. We're in Tongass National Forest, which spans nearly 70 million acres of natural habitat for the local wildlife to thrive. It encompasses nearly 90% of the southeastern panhandle of Alaska. But to truly experience it, I gotta get a bird's eye view. A great example of the kind of adventure you can have here is zip lining through the forest. This is a unique way to experience nature in its lush green glory that you can only experience in Ketchikan. Watch out, bald eagle. That was awesome. And to top it off, we got some bears. It's amazing to see bears in their natural habitat. I've got to get a closer look. And lo and behold, they are black bears. I was flying along this zip line and I just happened to look down and I see these charcoal black cotton balls, three of them, one big one, two small ones, sort of meandering across through the grass. So this right here, that's the mom, that's the female, and these are her cubs. She's probably anywhere between four to 12 years old. They can live upwards to 20 years, but their lives tend to be a little shorter and a little tougher in the wild. This is a critical time for these bears. These bears are not only dependent upon their mother for survival, to defend themselves from predators, and shockingly, the biggest predator for one of these cubs is actually another bear species but they're also learning the skills that they'll need to survive as adult bears. This is where they get to get all that energy they're gonna need to survive the tough Alaskan winter. It's a critical time, but this whole ecosystem as we've experienced on the edge of this temperate rainforest is when life is at its zenith. The salmon have piled up into these streams. They're bringing in the next generation. These bears, along with the eagles, capitalize on this bountiful resource, and life begins anew. It's spectacular. It's Alaska. Ketchikan, Alaska is everything I could have hoped for, bubbling with native Alaskan history and teeming with remarkable wildlife. The Rainforest Sanctuary isn't just zip lines and bears. It's also home to America's most iconic bird, the bald eagle. There are so many cool things to explore here at the Alaska Rainforest Center, but there's one very special experience, and it happens behind this door. I gotta be nice and quiet. We're here at the Alaska Rainforest Sanctuary, working with their partners, the Alaska Raptor Centers, good friends of mine. And these folks are on the front lines of not only saving these amazing creatures, but telling the story to thousands of people that come visit Ketchikan. Bald eagles are the ultimate predator. They have mastered survival in all 50 states. They have binocular vision, and this animal can be circling a mile or more above in the sky, peering down to the landscape below and pick out potential prey. Now, they will eat all sorts of things. They've been known to even take small deer. But primarily, especially here in Alaska, you're looking at a fish specialist. This is Volta. She found herself in harm's way when she flew into some power lines. They've rehabbed her, and while she can no longer live in the wild, she serves as a mighty ambassador, educating the public about this important species we almost lost due to human ignorance. 
what a great testament it is to our measure to protect our natural resources to see this ultimate flighted predator take to the skies and allow us to celebrate what makes them amazing and what makes their home, Alaska, such a special place. What an incredible day in Ketchikan. From coastal fishing for salmon, to experiencing native Alaskan heritage, from unbridled art, to the greenest nature in all its splendor. I can't wait to see where my next ocean trek takes me.